Welcome back. This is Bill Papoon, Managing Partner of Construction Science. And in this video, we're going to talk about open ends. Now, I'm very used to what that term means. But just to explain, an open end is an activity that's missing a predecessor and possibly as a successor as well. And there's a couple of ways to check them in P6 that I find to be very convenient. The first method I'll use while I'm building the schedule, which is more or less real-time checking of open ends. And if you've used Microsoft product, project, I'm sorry, then you're probably familiar with this method. So what we're going to do is add columns to represent predecessors and successors. To do that, I'm going to right click within the activity table, go to columns. I'm looking for the data that contains predecessors and successors. Because I don't always remember which category it is, although to make it easy for you, it's under lists. But if you forget where it is in terms of a category, and this would be true for any sort of data that you're looking for, we can change this filter to show all these, these uh, data fields in list mode, which is alphabetical. So I'll go down to the P's, and I will pick predecessors and bring it over. I'll skip a little bit further to successors and bring that over. Where I put these columns isn't real important. I just want to have them on the screen. Hit Apply or just OK. And I will need to expand this out so I see my additional columns. Now you'll notice that I, in many cases, have more than one predecessor. So if we make this a little bit wider, you get a sense of how many predecessors and successors these activities have, as represented by commas. It's not always possible to expand it out far enough to see all of them, but what I'm doing is checking for blank values. If you've watched our other videos, you know that any column within the activity table can be quickly sorted by clicking on that column header, either in ascending or descending order. So what I'm going to do now is click on the columns that represent the logic. I'm going to click on the predecessor column, and I'll click again so that blank values go to the top of the screen. And so what we see here are three activities that are missing predecessors. Obviously, one of them would always have to be an open end. That would be, in this case, start construction. But the other two clearly are missing predecessors. So that's something I would need to fix. I'll check successors the same way. We'll come in here, click on this one, push the blank values to the top of the screen, and you'll see that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six activities that are missing successors. One activity should have an open end. That would be something like this, project completion. So I have five activities that are missing logic. Now there's another way to check this, which avoids any other problems such as the way that we've sorted it on the screen, whether or not a special filter might have been applied, because obviously if we're not looking at all the activities, we're not getting a complete list of all the activities that have an open end. Also keep in mind, for this method to work best, we want to take out all groups in the uh, activity table. If you look at my group and sort, you'll see that I've taken them all out because I want to see all blank values together at the top of the screen. I don't want blank values interspersed within various groups. Now the other method of checking for open ends which I especially recommend as you're getting ready to do your final production of this schedule, to hand it to the owner, that sort of thing, is to look at the schedule log report. The schedule log is generated under Tools, Schedule, or the F9 key is the shortcut. Now, before we schedule it, what we're going to pay attention to here is this Log2 file. A lot of people don't watch this. What I've done is I've created a new file path to make it easier to find this text file. What I did is to create 
a folder that I call P6 Log. I put it right under my documents, so it's a convenient location. The default path that Primavera uses buries it a little bit further down on my hard drive and just makes it difficult to locate. So now I know that when this report is generated, it's going to have this name right here. Now keep in mind that Primavera will normally overwrite this file every single time you generate any schedule calculation. Even if it's a different schedule, it's still going to overwrite this file right here. The convenience of that is that you're not creating hundreds, even thousands of temporary files on your computer. You're simply overwriting the same one over and over. So I'm going to go ahead, schedule, so that I generate the latest report. Keep in mind, as you make more and more changes to your schedule, you'll need to keep generating this report to make sure you're looking at the current version. As I mentioned a moment ago, this is a simple text file, so it can be opened up with something like Notepad. Now there's a lot of useful information here. In one of our other videos, we talk about the meaning of some of this information and why you should be checking it every time you publish a schedule. But what we're going to focus on today are the warnings down here. And let me scroll a little bit further. And you'll see that we have three activities that are missing predecessors. It even tells us which ones. Likewise, I've got six activities missing successors. The correct answer, of course, would be one open end as far as a predecessor and one open end in terms of a successor. So if we see one and one, we're good to go. Any other numbers, we need to check this. Now, what I also like to do prior to my final production is I'll save a copy of this report so that if anything happens, for example, I'm going to give the electronic file in most cases to the client or the owner. So they might inadvertently do something to my schedule and then challenge me in terms of this problem. So I can show them the settings on this schedule prior to turning it over to them. It's essentially my proof that I calculated the schedule in a particular way and what my settings were when I calculated the schedule. Now to make sure this file doesn't get overwritten, because right now the next time I calculate any schedule, this will disappear. It'll be another schedule that's been saved using this generic name. So what I'll do is come in and save it as something unique and new. save, and you'll see that there it is. And now the next time we generate a report, it's going to go back to the original name. So I haven't modified that. Just keep in mind, you could certainly modify the name right here one time only in order to save it with a special file name, but you'll need to make sure that you come back in to Primavera P6 and change it back to sched log to avoid overriding this special file name that you were trying to save. I appreciate your joining us here today. If you have any questions about our training programs, here is my contact information. We're based in Northern California. We provide both online and in-person training every single week, and we'd love to hear from you. If you have any ideas for videos that you would like to see from us, please let me know, and thank you.